Scorpio, do you know where you're going? Are you having a hard time finding your northern star? Are there clouds in the way of your guiding light? The message coming through at this time is one of memory, potentially casting doubt or misdirection towards where it is that you are meant to go or where you want to go. There's a component of truth also being covered or difficult to extrapolate at this time for you guys. Hello, beautiful souls, my Scorpio friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Welcome to my table. If you're new here, hello, my name is Zachary. And if you're returning, hey, it's good to see you guys again. So my friends, looking at your energy here in meditation channel messages, there's actually quite quite a bit that came through here. So buckle up, buckaroo. <laughs> um, happy Scorpio season as well. It makes sense, I think, that so much of this message is coming through as we do enter the beautiful season of Scorpio, death and rebirth. So let's get started. I was given a symbol here and um, it didn't have the instruction to be given or utilized. There was something in me writing this out to um, gain better flow or to bring magic. Magic is something that came through with the symbol, bringing magic into your life. And based on the oracle cards that came through here too, I feel that this magic is like what I'm seeing is a, a magic compass. Um, giving direction, even though maybe the magnetic poles shifted, maybe you're struggling to find your northern star, something that gave direction before in the past is no longer affording you the same sort of direction. So the next thing that I saw or was given was an image of a waterfall and there was a space behind the waterfall and I was told um, under or by the waterfall, the space behind. So um, we'll, we'll come back to this. Um, this feels like um, it could be a literal space for some of you. It feels like a protective space, like the emotions representing a, a force of, um, or the waterfall representing a force of emotion, excuse me, like a barrier. As we get into the Oracle cards here, I'll, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit more. It feels like there is some sort of um, protection, or I guess I could just go in. Waterproof is one of the cards that came through in the Urban Crow um, Oracle. Not that it was pulled, but that stood out to me. The Waterproof card is about, um, well, you could look at it as kind of like a thick skin, as we say, grow thick skin. It's this protection from emotion. Um, based on the rest of the message here, it feels like they're is a reason for this protection, something has gone wrong even, um, or been removed from your life. So the next thing that I was shown was um, a chrysanthemum, but it was made out of wood. So a wooden chrysanthemum. As I'm doing uh, reading here, getting on Google, trying to figure out the meaning of this, there's many different meanings, obviously, in, in different parts of the world. The one that stood out the most though, uh, in Chinese culture, it's um, popular to make wood carvings of chrysanthemums, <laughs> and it symbolizes longevity and wealth, uh, nobility, good fortune, and luck. So I love to see that. In the U.S., it represents friendship, happiness, and well-being. In parts of Europe, it can symbolize um, mourning, mourning and sympathy. So both of these, it seems like both ends here, death and rebirth, right? are coming through in this message. It feels like there's a loss, but there's something taking its place, okay? But maybe a little bit of difficulty moving from where there was loss to where there is gain. Uh, the next thing that came through for me was the color orange. So that's my favorite color, but the sacral chakra, sacral sexual chakra. There could be something going on here, um, could be attached to a mother for some of you. I feel like this is being able to tap into your own energy in some way. Um, I was given 17 or 17th, so this could be a date of some sort. 17 is the star card. And in its shadow form, um, it can symbolize loss abandonment, theft, that sort of thing. And in its positive form, it can symbolize regaining something after loss, coming after the, the tower card. This is the promise of, of, re, of rebirth, of, of gaining from what it is that you've lost. Hope, renewed hope. 
Um, the next thing that came through, and this is this is interesting too. Well, okay, so remembrance, remembrance came through, and then I was told off your plate. This makes me feel like something that's been on your plate. Uh, maybe you've been working to get it off, or maybe you're not even aware that it's on there. But I'm getting the message that this is coming off of your plate in some way. And with remembrance coming through there, it does. I do feel partial to the components, like in in Europe, the morning and sympathy with the wooden chrysanthemum. Um, this was an interesting one, <laughs> and I'd love to hear your guys's input too on how this resonates with you. This one especially. This was unique. This component. Um, I was given butylene, so I had no idea what butylene was, and I went down the rabbit hole of discovering butylene. Butylene is also a uh, more common name, um, butene. So there's a few functions of it. Um, one of them that stood out was in cosmetics. It's used to, to provide a barrier for um, moisture retention so that the skin doesn't lose as much moisture. This brings me back to the waterfall imagery as well. Um, that moisture, that water being emotions or something deep in the subconscious too. There's something protecting or holding this in. The part that really stood out to me, so butylene gas apparently can cause um, frostbite, can freeze. So I got this message of cold, and as we're looking at emotion or subconscious coming through, it feels like something frozen, something was halted, stopped uh, within your own experience because of some form of loss, mourning, etc. So um, let's get further into this, you guys. Move into your oracle cards. That was a lot. A lot came through. So a few cards came through in the Urban Crow Oracle for you. First was um, Direction, then Memory, and then Scavenge. I love to see the 44 here on Scavenge being support. I do feel like your spiritual team, God Universe, Akasha, however you want to look at that, is providing additional support at this time because it's needed. Um, so with direction, this is where this message of, do you know, do you know where you're going? Do you know where your Northern star is? There's a request here to find, to find that guiding light. And I'm getting that it's difficult to find this right now. Maybe it was available at one point, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe you haven't had access to this yet. With memory coming through here, this is, um, so crows are, uh, very good, very good rememberers, right? <laughs> They have a great memory. They remember the good and the bad, those that treat them poorly and those that treat them well, even to the point where they teach their young the same sort of information to be able to identify who's good and who is bad. So what comes through on this card is actually this process of holding on to that information of what is good, what is bad, who has treated me this way or that way may actually be causing this form of cloud over your northern star, guiding guiding light, guiding energy. Um, there is a request here with this card to examine as well. Is there is there something going on? I'm kind of getting the freezing process here with the butylene. Um, have you frozen a memory in time? Are you allowing anything to be different? Let's say, you know, with a specific person, maybe there's someone in your life that done did you dirty, right? Um, are you allowing them or possibly anyone else to be anything different? What's coming to mind for me is every sinner has a future and every saint has a past. There is no one here on this planet that is immune or outside of this experience of being human. And that's not to say this doesn't feel like someone who shouldn't, you know, like maybe you shouldn't forgive or you shouldn't look at differently. And this isn't saying bring someone back into your life, you know, if if they're not in your life for a reason. What I'm getting is a request to let go of a grip of um, perception, OK, or even just experience. This is holding you in a place that's not allowing you to move forward in some way. And it feels like there's some really good stuff coming through. Um, so scavenge. My nose is itching now. <laughs> Feels like someone wants to talk. Scavenge here. So this card is um, is asking, are you are you taking just what you can get? There's more out there that that you deserve. And there may be a process right now where you're you're picking through um, 
whether this is the memory with someone else, um, your own experience, it's that whatever's hiding behind this waterfall. It feels like because that's locked away, there's a experience or feeling that this is all you deserve. And I'm just getting the message that there's so much more that you deserve here. And there's a need to let go of something. You may be settling for less. Um, your attention, okay, yeah, your attention may not be um, in an area that's giving you the greatest reward. That's here with Scavenge. So I did pull a card here too in the Wild Unknown Archetypes and the poet came out. And this did come out in reverse and this felt significant to me. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, this component of truth, um, truth needing to be spoken, clairvoyance, wisdom comes through with the poet. Having this in reverse here, I feel like there is a restriction to the access of, of some form of truth. Okay, Scorpio, my Scorpio friends, let's get into your tarot messages here. Um, what are we going to start with? Light Seers. Okay, for Scorpio, please, spirit. And happy birthday, everybody. I hope you guys have a beautiful Scorpio season. I have really been looking forward, split here, Knight of Wands, getting back up and trying again here. Re allowing yourself to be spontaneous in some way. I do feel like there has just been some restriction placed on us, okay? Uh, and this feels like it's, we maybe we didn't start it, but we finished it. <laughs> I think about too with memory, 12-12 um, there on the timer. With memory, uh, Scorpio, it can be said, Scorpio is the best at holding a grudge. The way that I take that is more um, a Scorpio never forgets, right? Scorpio never forgets. And this can be to a Scorpio's benefit or to their detriment. And that's kind of the message that I'm getting here is a request to examine, is this helping or is it hurting? And if we're finding that it's hurting, are we willing to see the truth in the matter? to synthesize our experience and the message we're receiving into wisdom. Let's find out. Okay. Lights, here's Tarot here for Scorpio. Um, I love you guys. Huge shout out to channel members. If you're interested in becoming a channel member yourself, I do have three tiers available. You can check that out. There's a join button next to the subscribe. There's also a link in the description of the video. And I do have personal readings open and available. If you need some help with something a little bit more personal to you, I would love to help you guys out. You can check out my website in the description of this video too. So what do we have here for Scorpio, please? Spit it. Spit it, spit it. And feel free, like I said, you guys, I do I do love to chat you guys up in the comments. And this, this um, energy specifically, I am very curious how this applies to you on a personal level, especially being here in your season. It's time. It's time for death, right? It's time for death. Here we go. <laughs> Ace of Wands here at the bottom. So this is your hope, hopes and dreams, your desire. Um, this is starting a new journey, you guys. Having, having this energy come back into your experience and um, maybe a new creative pursuit, but a new journey in some way. In this, in this deck in particular with the imagery here, this like teardrop fire piece, um, this is drawing me to the poet here that came through in reverse, this idea of clairvoyance and wisdom. I feel like you guys are seeking the answers. You're seeking your Northern Star here. Maybe you're even aware that there is a need to go inside, inside, <laughs> Scorpio, to find these answers. Maybe you are aware at this point that um, you have lost access to the guiding light of your Northern Star. Okay, keep going. Um, Curious Travels Tarot here. For my Scorpio friends. And this is a general reading, you guys. Five of Cups here at the split. So disappointment, loss, regret even. A need to turn from that to what is still um, existing in your life. It, it does feel, so far with this message, it feels like that energy is coming through where there is uh, difficulty in pulling away from something that hurt. Those bad news bears. Uh, general reading, you guys, you are super intelligent, very, very emotionally intelligent as well. The sun here at the split. There is success coming. 
The sun is coming out from the clouds. Please use that intuition to decipher whether or not these messages are for you. And if they're not for you, it's okay to leave them behind. Check out any other major placement in your chart if you'd like. We do have every component of energy in our chart. If you want, check them out. I encourage. I encourage you. All right, what do we have going on here for Scorpio, please? And if you're here in um, the U.S. anyway, I know not everyone celebrates Halloween. If you guys are dressing up, I'd love to hear maybe what you're dressing up as. Ooh, the chariot. So seven. Okay. Being the chariot, the poet is also number seven here. And that was something that was standing out to me. Being in reverse, it feels like this energy is blocked, like I was saying. So this is your fear version, being the chariot. It feels like there is a fear towards... Not necessarily positive um, forward movement, but um, there's a component to the chariot here of faith, of needing to trust that this chariot is being moved or driven in a direction that is for your highest good, or that it's, that it's even happening. If we were to look at the horses attached to this chariot here, it's not attached to the chariot. So this whole process is running on faith. I feel like there is a fear right now towards, like I said, miss, you're missing this connection to what has given you guidance before in the past, or you're just feeling disconnected at this time. And I feel like it's not that it's a test of faith, but this is illuminating to you where something needs to shift gears so that you can take a happy ride here. But this is your anxiety right now. Maybe you're struggling with a little bit of faith on your journey. That's real. That is real. Okay. So general energy here to start, Eight of Pentacles. Um, in this deck in particular, the cycle of the moon is standing out here. I am getting this note of patience, patience for the process, to do what one must, to do what one can. Okay, so this card, this card is work, passion we put towards our work. There's a caution towards burnout with the Eight of Pentacles. Um, I do feel, especially with the imagery here, there's um, spell work. You know, she's holding a candle here. She's a kitchen witch, <laughs> genderless. But um, I feel that there is an encouragement at this time to tend to personal, um, oh, what is that word? Rituals, personal rituals. This doesn't have to be straight up magic spells, but that did come through in the channeling message, magic. Um, yeah, it feels like, what is it that, yeah, what is it that they need? Patience is what's really coming through on that. You know, actually what is standing through, standing out to me, coming through, um, it's almost as if she's staring into this candle here. What stands out is Trataka. So it's Trataka is this, uh, a candle gazing. It is this process of um, really like absorbing that light and that energy from the flame into the sacral chakra. Look into this, you guys. I think that might be helpful for some of you. Candle gazing to help activate some energetic components inside of you. Yeah, there's something about creativity that is, is missing here. Look into some Trataka. I think that will be helpful. Queen of Cups comes through here next. So right away, just because this came through here in meditation too, the quality of protecting the emotions comes through. The Queen of Cups is very intuitive as well. So back to the poet here as well. Um, being in that blocked energy, it feels like there is a need for a reinvigoration of your sacral energy. Something has blown that candle out. Whatever loss theft, abandonment has taken place. And this could also be ourselves. We can also contribute to like self-abandonment, right? Whatever the component is or components that are going into this, what I'm getting so far is the, um, it's possible to move through this, okay, you guys? And more so, it's, it's probable. By the, next, uh, by the next full moon is something that's coming out here. Things can be different. And I say can because 
we have to participate here in this energy, right? We have to participate in shifting our own energy. So yes, it feels like there are illuminations coming through as far as intuition with the Queen of Cups here. It may even uh, freak you out a little bit. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. So good stuff coming through for you at this time. <laughs> Already feeling emotional. God, <laughs> the star. Well, 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 Scorpio. This came through uh, the channel reading. I am so happy to see this. <laughs> it's bringing tears to my eyes. <laughs> Yes, it feels very much like there has been not just a tower moment, but like an ongoing tower. Um, and I think part of the reason why it's been ongoing is because we're having a hard time figuring out how to get out of this rubble. <laughs> With the tower, we don't stay in the tower, right? We don't try to rebuild that tower. So there may, there may be an experience with uh, some where instead of leaving this tower that's come down out of fear, out of, um, and I feel like it's fear, like this star has not been seen here. You haven't, you haven't been given this card here after the tower. And so you're standing there after this tower has come down and gone, where am I going? Well, I might as well try to rebuild this. Like I need some form of shelter, right? It doesn't feel like you're trying to shoot, shoot yourself in the foot or anything like that. It's, it's really, you're doing what you can, right? You're doing what you know. But having this come through, I very strongly feel the clouds are, are parting. This is giving you access to renewed hope, but a fresh start, a guiding light. I feel very much this guiding light. You're making this connection again. She's got a rope here around the star. You're finding your guiding light. Yes, Ugh, I have all the chills on that, you guys. 2233 on the timer as well. Ooh, this too, my goodness. Here's the chills. High Priestess comes in to clarify with the star. Um, the unconscious, as I'm talking about that waterfall that came through in channeling or protecting the emotions with the Queen of Cups. This is um, the subconscious realm. This is magic, deep magic with the High Priestess. She holds all knowledge. It feels... Um, like I was saying, that that need to um, let go of something, whatever this memory is that's clouding, to allow you to move forward here. She is wanting, she is beckoning you here to take a peek behind the curtain. Whatever this is, though, is buried pretty deep, but not so deep that you're not feeling, like you're feeling the effects of this. And as an extremely intuitive sign yourself, I feel that even dreams is, is something that's coming through here. You're giving, being given messages in your dreams. Um, in this imagery here too, I'm being drawn to the posts that are next to her, which bring me to the moon card, the protection that man builds around their fears to survive. And there's this arc, this golden arc right above it. This all encompassing like, a warm hug is what I'm getting. This ultimate protection. You're ready to process through whatever whatever it is that's been behind this waterfall. Ooh, okay. You know what I just got drawn to? I didn't pull an animal card for you guys. So let's do that here real quick. Wild unknown animal spirit here for Scorpio, please. Maybe we just weren't meant to do it until now. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> Um, raccoon is what came through here and it actually fell out here in reverse. So raccoon, um, the message of like a mask, you guys. So as I'm talking about something that's being hidden here in, in the subconscious realm, this is, this is something that can be a bit mischievous. What I'm getting from it is this component, this event, this memory, this attachment to the memory, uh, trauma is starting to come through or coming through with more force right now and providing or giving you this mischievous effect. And it's this is the part that's making it difficult for you to find your guiding light with the star. The mask energy, the energy of a mask, allows us to either hide something to protect it or to live something out with protection 
to give us that that extra energy to be or act out what it is that we need to for our betterment. So this can be for better or for worse, right? I feel like it's time, you guys, to take off the mask. And it doesn't need to come off completely. But we're taking the mask off and we're deciding, is this the mask that I still want to wear? Or is it time to buy another mask or make another mask? As I'm asking about costumes here, who's dressing up as what? Ah, if you feel comfortable sharing, what do you feel your mask has been? Or what do you feel your mask is covering? And please be conscious as well, you guys, of others with trauma as far as, you know, triggering with certain events. I know, I know there's a lot of things that we can't experience, but please be conscious of that. One second, I need some water. I'm really getting into this one. Awesome. Okay. So what you guys don't see coming, let's get into that. What is in the dark? What is in the dark here that's trying to come forward? Mm, you. Five of Pentacles. So what you don't see at this time here is the access that you have to this key, your ability to open up this door, to bring yourself out of a situation exactly where you are here, to bring yourself closer to where this guiding light is, or to open the window or door so that you can see the sky. I feel for some that, um, you know, metaphorically here in this room, in the caverns of our mind, there has been a sequestering to an area where you're not allowing yourself or have been given access to the night sky, to the sky, to see the star, to be able to connect to the divine, to the ether is the way that I'm taking that. What you don't see here is there's a need to look up. It's time to look up. You weren't meant to be stuck here in this place forever. Do we experience this up and down? Yes, but it feels like we fell into a valley here and we're having a hard time coming back up because maybe there's no light. But what we're not seeing is that we are that light or that that light is shining here on this key to the answer. It's the divine or guides are giving us direction on how to help ourselves here. Look up. Even, you know what, standing out Psychologically speaking, we've done some studies on this. When we look down, when we're spending most of our life looking down, walking, whatever, we tend to um, connect to more depression, anxiety, those darker spaces within ourselves. Not that that's a bad thing, but just being conscious of this, this process of looking up, right? <laughs> looking up allows us to tap more into hope, optimism. And I think that's beautiful with the star being up there. There's It's time to look up, you guys, even physically. Start making that shift if you're somebody maybe who is, is struggling in a, in a depression or, or anxious state, okay? The magician, ooh, yeah. This comes in to clarify the five of pentacles. I feel this message of looking up here. You're being asked to look up, not just to see the star because it's shining on you. <laughs> It's dropping the lasso for you here to grab, but you can't grab that if you can't see it, right? Um, you're also being asked to look up so that you can see that you have um, all of the elements that you need. You have all of the tools, all of the ability to manifest whatever it is that you need or want. Magic, the magician, you guys, with magic coming through. So the chariot here, whoop, the chariot you had in your... Fear, aversion. The chariot is the magician energy put into motion. The magician here, this is potential, really. It's the potential to create. Before we can create, we need to understand that we can, right? So this is the key here that's coming through in the dark. It's for you to realize that you have access to everything that you need to move yourself out of the situation, to move yourself to where you want to go, to create the life that you want, to heal in the ways that you want to, to bring the kinds of people that you want into your life. I feel that um, this mechanism though, with this being in your fear version, the process of moving from potential to action in manifestation has been harmed in some way in the past. Whatever the memory is that's being talked about here in the Urban Crow Oracle, 
that may be covering that guiding light. Scavenge is standing out here too. There's something about that experience that is telling your corporeal form here, <laughs> your human experience, that maybe it's, it's not safe to manifest or that you can't or that you're not good enough. And that's horseshit. Of course, Scorpio, you are enough. And you're deserving. You're deserving to craft and create the life that you want. You get to decide what you deserve. And I feel like that's what that's what this message is, is coming down to, putting you back in the driver's seat. It may be scary, but this is where you want to be, the driver's seat. Okay. So your challenge at this time. <laughs> challenge or difficulty, Knight of Wands. And this came through at the split as, as we were shuffling. The hard part right now here is allowing yourself to try something again. This horse has bucked you off. But we're not going to stay. We're not going to stay down. Ain't nobody going to keep us down, right, Scorpio? Right. <laughs> Except for us. And what I'm getting is it's time now to push our own weight off of ourselves. It's time to step into a moment of, not even a moment, that timeline of this beautiful, creative, spontaneous energy. I feel for some of you in the difficulty here, this may be feeling like it's moving too fast. But the speed, mm, what I'm seeing is like a rubber band. So this elastic force, elastic force in physics um, has a specific equation just for elastic force. The more that you stretch it, the more that there is resistance to pull it back. In order to break this band, there must be a greater force, right? There must be speed. So this is what I'm getting here. This rubber band, this is this memory, this scavenging, taking what you can get. This is this force that's bringing you back here. So spirit, God source, you, your higher self is bringing the speed in through here, this burst of energy. Um, and it may feel like I said, this is going too fast. Take the ride, have faith back to the chariot with the faith component. Don't be scared or do be scared. Okay, Scorpio, and do it anyway. <laughs> I, I believe in you. I know that you can do this. Three of Cups here to clarify the challenge. Success, victory, celebrating with um, teammates is something that comes through. But your, your friend group, your soul tribe. I think um, a part of this difficulty is uh, 33, 33 on the timer too. A part of this difficulty is maybe there has been a loss of friends. Maybe there's been a loss of the support group. That was coming through with uh, the star through meditation. Loss, abandonment. You are not alone. You are not alone. <laughs> I am here with you at the very least. And you are here with you too. I know that in times where it does feel really dark, we can get lost in feeling that we are alone, especially when we look physically at our surroundings um, and may see that that is true physically. But even in that instance, one thing that I consider is we can never know what it is that um, we do as far as impact on another person or how other people um, think about us from time to time. You know what I mean? We don't express these things to everybody all the time. And what it feels like is maybe you're, you're needing that energy. You're needing that expression from somebody of how, how much you matter to them. You matter. You matter to me, Scorpio. And um, if you need to borrow that for a second until you can feel that for yourself, do. Please do. You matter to me. You mean the world to me. Um, this is such a beautiful message, you guys. It does feel that there is, I feel the struggle. I feel the struggle. But the truth is, you got this. Everything is working to support you right now. Let it. Give in to the support. You deserve help. Okay? Whatever that means. 
if you need assistance in some way. This doesn't feel like something that needs to be done alone. And if there is somebody that you can reach out to, I highly encourage it. You deserve help too. If there isn't somebody here physically that you have access to, we're going to start ta tapping into the etheric realms, okay? Because that truly is a powerhouse <laughs> of support. Ask for what you need, okay? I'm actually going to pull one of these uh, for Scorpio real quick, and then I'll get another Oracle card, and we're going to move into an extended reading here. So for Scorpio, please, spirit. Yay! <laughs> Manifestation, law of attraction, thoughts become things. Okay, this is just a gentle reminder here too. It does feel like there are thoughts that we're struggling with. Abundance, an inflow of money, love, or rewards. Yes, like with the scavenge here, well, we're done, okay? We're done picking up scraps. We're always worth more than that. We may have gotten lost here though in the things that we're telling ourselves because of what other people told us. Fuck them. <laughs> okay? <laughs> With love and light, of course. But abundance, you guys, it's coming. This is available for you. And this entire message is, the intention is to move you or get you ready for this. We need to resonate to those things of abundance that we desire or that are coming in for us. So it's time to tune the frequency. It's time to crank it up, okay? All right, let's do a Blue Angel Oracle for you. You want a star seed, okay? We're gonna do a star seed Oracle for you to close this out. And then I'm gonna move into an extended. If you guys wanna join me there, we're gonna go over direct messages from your higher self, uh, love and advice, career and advice, and then what it is that you're manifesting based on your thoughts and emotions. Just to give you a little bit of an insight towards direction for you. So. For Scorpio, please, Spirit. Final messages for Scorpio. Ooh. Hmm. I remember. I remember. Soul plan, the fated life versus the destiny life. Totally, this makes sense. <laughs> so this card, when it comes through, we're talking about uh, moving from the faded life. You know what? I'm just being told to read it. I'm going to read it here in the book. <laughs> this is a perfect fit here, though, and I can see this being the, tran the transitory point. It's time to shift from our old life to our new life. Yeah, I'm Amber. <laughs> so there was a moment before you were born when you chose the conditions of the life you're living right now. When you plotted out these exact moments along the timeline of your life. We live in a world of free will, and therefore these moments become our destiny only through saying, yes, the fated life is the one we were born into. The destiny life is the one our soul chooses. And it takes courage and faith. Hey, if you pull this card, it's because you're likely now face to face with the choice to follow the destiny life over the fated life, to trust the path your soul is calling you toward, and to remember that this moment was prearranged on your life's timeline. You may find yourself at a crossroads at a moment when you're being called to make a decision, to keep walking the perfectly laid out path before you, keep scavenging there, or uh, to take the path of the one less traveled. You may be facing a change of career, a new relationship, a difficult decision, or something else that requires courage and faith. You're being invited to remember your soul's greater plan and to surrender to it. When you're confronted with a path that's undefined, it's normal for fear or for doubt to rear its head. In fact, this is a certain sign that you're facing your soul's greater plan. Every hero in his or her life journey comes eye to eye with doubt. The only way around it is through it. It is all part of the larger plan. What are you being called to do to surrender to your soul's plan? Okay, Scorpio, I love you guys so much. I am going to move into the extended, like I said. So if you want to join me there, there's links in the description of the video here. You can check out personal readings, like I said, if you'd like. If this reading did resonate with you, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I totally appreciate the support. I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description too, if you feel called to donate. is isn't mandatory, but to those who do, thank you guys so much. I appreciate, um, I, I mean, I couldn't do this without you. This channel couldn't run without your support. So thank you, thank you. Scorpio, I love you. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very soon. Be well.